All right, in this video, let's create a data mining structure called a decision tree. And hopefully we're going to dispel one of the myths associated with creating or using data mining. And that myth is that it has to be a data warehouse or a cube. It does not. And as a matter of fact, here we have a view, just a simple SQL Server database view. If you come over to our, our management studio, we, we got the, the database engine open, and we, just, we have a view of the, the target mail from the AdventureWorks data warehouse database. All right, come back over here. I've, I've done a little prep work, created the data source, created the data source view, which is a view of the view in this case. And now we want to create our mining structure. All right, so we have our, we right click, we go to new mining structure, and we walk through from a relational database, there we go, or a data warehouse, or from an existing cube. We're gonna do it from a view. We've gotta pick the model we want. All right, in this case, there, there are nine of them, so we could drop down and choose one of the nine models. Uh, we're going to use the decision tree here, and we're going to continue to move forward. It's saying this is what you have in your, your data source and your data source view, so yeah, that's cool. Uh, a case. Uh, a case is a table that holds the data that we want trained. So yes, this is the only one. So now what do we need? Well, we need a key. That's expand this a little bit so we see some things so it said uh, here's our key you can use the customer key for this well that's fine here are the inputs all right what are some things we want to input here what are some, some things to make our predictions here all right so what do we want to predict well we want to predict the bike buyer so let's come on here and now we have our prediction and down here we've got a this thing says suggests um i like it because it's usually right. So let's give it a second to work and let's see some things it thinks we should include as inputs to make our prediction. Age is a good one, number of cars owned, all right. Total children, why not? Uh, these, even though they, they, their score up, you know, they're scoring pretty high, we aren't, aren't interested in these. Uh, commute distance seems like it would be something we would use. Do I have total children? Yeah, sure. Uh, how about uh, marital status, maybe, maybe marital, why not include it? How about gender? Sure. And that's probably about it. All right, so we go OK, and now we're ready to move forward. We have our inputs, we have what we want to predict, and we need a key. We've got our customer key and our alternative key we could also use. Let's go to next. So we have two different types of of our, our content types here. So we've got continuous and discrete. Uh, continuous is a number from one to, you know, whatever. And discrete is kind of something that's fixed, all right? Um, let's, let's, again, this is nice to detect and tell us what it thinks is discrete, right? Gender is discrete. There are no numbers of gender or no amount of uh, letters for gender. It's uh, male or female, so it's going to be a discrete. All right, and it gives us the data type here. This looks easy, looks great. I like that, the detect all is awesome. Let's move forward. So here we have our percentage of data for testing. 30% seems to be a, a good number for uh, testing. Now I won't go into what's this, but it's a, a, a cent, uh, this is a, a, a percentage for testing or training the model. And 30% is a, a good number to use here. All right, so we'll go to next. We'll give it a name. We'll let it use the same name because it doesn't matter here. I'm going to allow drill through, and we're going to finish. Now, before we can move forward, we must deploy the model. All right, we've got to basically you've got to build it. So let's come up here, right click, let let's process. Yeah, it appears out of date. Okay. And now it is reading the cases. Nice. All right, well, that was pretty painless. Process succeeded, so let's close this. Let's close this. And now we can uh, come up here, let's hide you. Now we can, let's expand. We wanna give ourselves a little room to look at the model. So now we have our mining models to look at. Now we have our mining model viewer. All right, so now we wanna take out, yeah, we already did this. We've already completed this, but We'll do it again. Go ahead, build it. That's fine. There it is. Now let's move this. Let's hide you. Hide you. This is what we want to see. 
So here, you notice we have our, our all. All right, this is the, the root, so to speak, of the, the model. And as you can see up here, it tells us that there were um, almost 13,000 cases. And remember the one back over here, if we come to our view, you can see to the right, right? A bike buyer is one, someone who didn't buy it is a zero. So we come back to our model and we can see the root. So one, there were uh, 6,361 that bought and um, a few more that didn't buy. All right, so now as we walk through this, let's expand this. Now let's go to the cases because we want to we we want to uh, focus on only those that that made purchases, right? Because we want to predict who's going to make purchases in the future. So as we go from left to right, the stronger colors are going to be the ones we want to focus on. All right. Now let's we've moved our levels over. Let's move our model over to the right. And you can see we have one right here that's pretty high. Now these are only 47 cases. So out of these 47, uh, did I just click the right one? No, it was right here. Yeah, yeah. commute distance. All right, so out of these, now here's, I, I must have just clicked off the, the wrong one. All right, so here we go. Either way, uh, this is one we can uh, take a look at. You can see it's dark blue, number one. Number two, we have 262 cases, which is pretty high. And out of those 262, 256 bought bikes. Uh, that's 97%. So we can see that they are between the age of 43 and 47. Number of cars owned is zero. Total number of zero, uh, children home is zero. And the commute distance is zero to one miles. All right, so who would we want to target there? Well, it's kind of obvious. These, these would seem like uh, people we'd want to tell our marketing department, hey, uh, this, this certainly is one of our our groups that we want to market to. This certainly is our target audience. I mean, look at that, uh, the, the probability of, of them purchasing a bike from us. And again, down here we can see, we've got, uh, now again, there are only 11 cases here. So uh, the more cases, the better. So let's see if we can find one that's got a few more cases. 12, 12, no, that's not a lot of cases. Even though the correlations are strong, uh, that's one we've already looked at. All right, so we're good. I'll take that's probably the, the bluest. So uh, again, only 11 cases, but you can see, we come up here to the one, 99% uh, of these people, uh, of these 11 cases, 11 bought a bike. So what what group are they in? Well, they're um, less than or equal to 65 and less than 75. Community distance is not uh, 10 miles plus. Total children equals four. So it looks like, I wish we had some more as commute distance. I wish we had some more information on this guy. Uh, because there are only 11 cases, uh, sure, we could target to this group, but um, the, the, the more cases you have, the, the better to make these models against. All right, so um, the, the age is greater than 38, number of cars owned is zero. There's a high probability that this group, you can see up here, the one is uh, gonna make, uh, it's gonna buy a bike from us. So again, these are people that we're going to want to market to, all right? Obviously, the uh, number of cars owned is, is also a big deal. But you can see, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, you can see that, that uh, let's bring this back a little bit. You can see that the algorithm has decided that when we, we chose our input and we want to make our model, that age uh, for this decision tree and for what we're doing is the number one determinant for buying a bike, right? Uh, it we didn't we didn't do anything to do this. It did this. The algorithm decided that this was number one, and then it, it branched off from there. All right. So that's a brief intro into how we use it, um, the decision tree, to make predictions about who is going to buy a bike from us, who is not, and more importantly. Uh, this intro was really to get you used to or to bring about the fact that we can, you can use data mining with an Excel spreadsheet. You can use, you know, import it into SQL. It, it, it can be a very, it's a very flat structure. And that's what this is. This is just a view uh, of flattened structure from some of the tables up here. All right. That's all this is. All right. So we don't need a data warehouse or a cube in order to create a model as we've just shown. 
All right, thanks for watching.